Hello, my name is Simo and this is Simo Says. Today's episode is on the gender data gap. When doing scientific studies, the average man is considered and pretty much no one else is. So if biologically you are not a white cis male who is 1.77 metres tall and weighs 76 kilograms, then a lot of the world isn't designed for you. This lack of information on other parts of the population is referred to as the gender data gap. In Caroline Criado Perez's book, Invisible Women, she says, For millennia, medicine has functioned on the assumption that male bodies can represent humanity as a whole. As a result, we have a huge historical data gap when it comes to female bodies. And this is a data gap that is continuing to grow as researchers carry on ignoring the pressing ethical need to include female cells, animals and humans in their research. Let's jump straight into an example. Women are 17% more likely to die in a car crash. Why? Because the crash test dummy used by most car manufacturers is based on an average male body. So some car manufacturers try to combat this by shrinking their crash test dummies to suit an average woman's proportions. But funnily enough, men and women are biologically different. And I don't just mean genitalia. Women have less muscles in their neck and upper torso. This makes them three times more vulnerable to whiplash. What's worse is research has shown that car seats are too firm and can actually throw a woman forward faster in a car crash. Thankfully, Astrid Linder of the Swedish National Road and Transport Research Institute has developed a female crash test dummy to try and help combat this. So here's hoping car manufacturers jump on the bandwagon and start using a female crash test dummy. In 2016, US National Institutes of Health and the Canadian Institutes of Health Research introduced mandates that animals involved in scientific research must be both sexes. Why? Because the vast majority of animals used were male. That means that there are examples of drugs that made it to market without them ever having been tested on a woman. It doesn't end there. Even stab-proof vests that police officers wear are not designed for boobs. So not only does that make them uncomfortable, it also makes them sit slightly higher, exposing the bottom of the torso, which makes them vulnerable to stabbings, which means they are not fit for purpose. The gender data gap exists in so many areas of study and it is a glaring example of a lack of diversity within STEM careers. Humans exist on a wide spectrum, and this variety should be represented in every field. A lack of diversity is clearly dangerous, and if you want the best outcome, then you need a diverse team. Don't believe me? Well, let's get some stats. Diverse management teams earn 19% higher revenues than non-diverse ones. Diverse executive teams are 21% more likely to experience above average profitability. And it's been estimated that equality in the workforce could add $28 trillion to the value of the global economy by 2025. And honestly, if you don't see a lack of diversity as an issue, I don't know what to say. Since we started with a quote from Invisible Women, it feels appropriate to finish with one. One of the most important things to say about the gender data gap is that it is not generally malicious or even deliberate, quite the opposite. It's simply the product of a way of thinking that has been around for millennia and therefore a kind of not thinking, a double not thinking even. Men go without saying and women don't get said at all. Because when we say human, on the whole we mean man. My name is Simo and that's what I say. But what do you think about the gender data gap?